Hey, what's up, Zoners, and welcome to the earliest waiver wire show on the planet. Today, I am going to be going over all of the players on your waiver wire I think that you should pick up and what you should spend on them. You don't have money? I don't either, man. But hey, priorities are priorities. Uh, think of it that way. We have a running back dude for the first time in like three weeks. I'm going to blow all my money on him, dude. He is the number one running back for a great defensive team. This team is going to make the playoffs, man. They almost beat the Chiefs today. Holy shit. He is a rookie running back. Dude, I'm telling you, you got to spend your money on this guy. We also have a wide receiver. He signed two weeks ago, made his debut this week with a team I don't even like, man. But guess what? He just filled, he stepped into a role from a player that got on IR, like, I don't know, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. And he was a top 15 wide receiver. And he has the same stats. So holy shit, dude, we need to pay attention to this guy and spend money on him. I have all my notes typed out. I will be sharing that with you in a second. You can do it! All right, let's start off with the wide receivers. And we're going to be talking about Marquez MVS. All right, I don't scantling something, something. Or is his name Rashid Shahid? We do not know for sure. 0.6% rostered, man. He's available everywhere. Go pick him up. 20% fab I would spend on him. He had three receptions on three targets. You're like, why the hell do I care about that? Well, that equaled 109 yards and two touchdowns, man. That is some Rashid Shahid numbers right there, and that is what we want. Only a 14% target share. But, hey, again, man, in this offense, they chuck it deep, I don't know, like five, six times a game, uh, five or six times a game, and Rashid Shahid was benefiting huge from early in the season from that. And uh, now we have Chris Olave on IR, maybe season-ending uh, maybe season ending IR, so, man, MVS, pick him up while you can. It is worth the gamble. It was a season de debut, man. It was the first time he played with Derek Carr and the Saints. Uh, he signed two weeks ago. Olave on IR, caught it off, carted off to the hospital. So, again, he might be done for the year. They do go against Cleveland Week 11. They are giving up the fourth most fantasy points per game, 32.2, to wide receivers. And Jameis Winston's over there. They're going to have to keep up. So, hey, MVS is actually going to be a really good start next week. Then the next wide receiver, dude, I just traded for Debo Samuel. And again, I tried to trade for Juwan Jennings. That's who I wanted. But uh, that was a Cow that was a 49ers fan, and he was not giving him up. But Ricky Pearsall, I just watched this shit today, man. It was upsetting. He's really good against zone, all right? So if the team is playing it a lot of zone, look for Ricky Pearsall to do his damage. 25% rostered, so three out of four leagues, he is available. 10% fab. He's a first-round rookie. Kyle Shanahan, first-round rookie wide receiver, so you got to pay attention to that. Uh, four receptions on six targets for 73 yards and a touchdown versus Tampa Bay. Again, Tampa Bay is like one of the giving up the most points to wide receivers this year. That's why I was all pumped up for Debo. He is averaging five targets a game since returning from being shot like 50 cent, except eight times less. <laughs> uh, that was an 18% target share this week. He matched Debo in targets. So, you know, the draft capital is there. He looks great. Uh, pick up Ricky Pearsall. There's way too many mouths to feed, but if you are desperate, he is worth a pickup. He's uh, versus Seattle week 11. They are giving up the 11th most fantasy points per game, 28.3 uh, to wide receivers. Again, if it is a zone, heavy zone team, pay attention to Ricky Pearsall. And then, hey, man, Jalen Coker, the Coker crew out here, 4.4% rostered, 1% fab I spent on him. Dude, Bryce Young is averaging, what, like 100 passing yards a game, so it's nothing like his upside is not great. But in full PPR, man, he is probably worth a flex. Three receptions on eight targets. So he led the team. You know, if somebody's getting eight targets, I do pay attention for 41 yards. So led the team in targets and yards versus the Giants. 32% target share. That's great, man. Anything over like 28% is elite. Uh, let's see. Has led the team in targets two of the last three weeks, man. Double the targets of any other wide receiver this week. So he is the wide receiver to own. Again, Xavier Leggett had the best cornerback matchup here, and he did nothing with it. So Jalen Coker looks like the wide receiver to own for the Panthers. Undrafted rookie. So Xavier Leggett was like a fourth round. This guy was undrafted, but who cares? It's the NFL. Uh, Thielen will eventually return, and he, and he is that slot wide receiver. But, hey, man, who knows if he will return? And that fool's old, man, old. All right? By next week, but he does have the 10th best strength of season, rest of, uh, rest of <laughs> the 10th best strength of schedule <laughs> uh, for fantasy purposes, the rest of season for wide receivers. If you can understand what I just said there. Alec Pierce next up. And the last wide receiver I'm going to talk about, 16% owned. You can almost put Adane Mitchell, or I, I don't, I'm, I know I spelled his, or I'm saying his name wrong. 1% fab, four receptions on seven targets for 81 yards. That led the team. So he led the team in yards and he got a touchdown. 
this week versus Buffalo. He had a 20% target share. Michael Pittman is out, and that is what I want to pay attention to. If Michael Pittman is out, it's either going to be Alec Pierce or Adonai Mitchell catching these, uh, catching a lot of passes from Joe Flacco. And Joe Flacco, man, he just throws it. He threw three interceptions and was still throwing the ball downfield. Uh, so, yeah, dude, Alec Pierce, if Michael Pittman Jr. is out in this back injury, he almost went on IR like a couple a couple weeks ago with this back injury. So we have to pay attention to this. He might go on IR now. And then one of these uh, wide receivers will definitely be worth starting in the flex. And then Alec Pierce is the deep threat, man. 50% of his targets coming on deep passes this season. 41 yards or fewer in each of his past four games. So, again, dude, not great. But without Michael Pittman Jr. there, I think that he can uh, be a flex for you. At the Jets, week 11, second fewest fantasy points per game to wide receiver. So, terrible matchup next week. But, again, dude, Joe Flacco doesn't care. He will throw the ball a lot versus the Jets. Uh, so again, if Michael Pittman's out, we're looking at Alec Pierce as a flex next week. On to the running backs, dude. And this is what I want to talk about. Audric Estime. All right. I wanted, I actually, I was actually going to pick this guy up. It was either between him or Noah Brown. And I was going to drop uh, the Eagles defense. But I did not want my opponent to pick up the Eagles defense against the Cowboys today. So I wish I, I made the wrong decision, okay? 1.1% owned, 40% fab I spent on him. I wish I would have got him for free. 14 rushes led the team. 453 yards, he led that team, all right? He went against Kansas City. Kansas City is giving up the fewest amount of points to running backs. Dude, they're like, they're the, the second the second fewest rushing yards per game, only like 73 rushing yards per game, dude, over the last three weeks. So really, really good against the running backs, and he still got 14 rushes, man. 82% running back rushing share. Javante had one carry. I think uh, McLaughlin had two carries. So, hey, this is a steam team now, all right? He is the rookie. They're not going to go back to Javante. Kansas City was really good, and he did good against it. Hovering around 10% snap share over the last three weeks. So no, no real indication that he was going to take over this week. It just happened. Fifth round rookie. He's averaging 5.8 yards per carry in four of, four of his five games played this year. Now it's four of six because he did not hit that mark today, but again, it was against Kansas City. But man, he looks good when he plays against a really like average or below defenses. And now he gets uh, Atlanta, and Atlanta is giving up a ton of points in the past, dude. Just look at what happened this week. But the ninth fewest fantasy points to uh, running backs. But hey, man, the Denver Broncos defense is one of the best in the league. There are going to be so many opportunities for Audric Estime. Dude, he's like the new Kareem Hunt for me. I love him. I wish I would have picked him up. Ray Davis. Okay, now we're getting the, uh, into the handcuff. So Ray Davis, still a handcuff, 20% owned. If you are a James Cook owner, I know we got like 90% of the running back rushes today. Pick up Ray Davis. And then Braylon Allen, he was matching um, uh, Brees Hall in rushes right before I turned the game off. He is still a top-tier handcuff. Uh, people are dropping him all over the place, 22% owned. Blake Corum. Kyron has the highest usage rate, man. So, of course, Blake Corum is a top-tier handcuff. Uh, so, again, you got to pick him up if you are a Kyron owner. And I, I, I had Isaac Garindo in, in here as the handcuff. He only had one rush, dude. Mason only had one rush as well. They uh, ended up throwing the ball a lot and not running it too much with Christian McCaffrey back. But I would rather have Isaac Garindo over Jordan Mason if I was a CMC owner. And then, hey, man, Trey Benson. If he ever, if if, uh, if James Conner ever goes down, Trey Benson's going to be a top 10 running back, for God's sakes, top tier handcuff there. And then Gus Edwards actually had Kamani Vidal on here. Uh, I checked it, and Kamani Vidal was not getting any carries. Uh, Gus Edwards had like three rushes to J.K. Dobbins' five and actually looked pretty good doing it. So he is the handcuff for J.K. Dobbins' owners. And then here we go, man. Tight ends. This guy pissed everybody off this week, but he is still worth, man, you better pick him up, all right? Who knows if T. Higgins gonna, is going to play again? Mike Gusecki. 44.7% owned, so he has not hit that 50%, so I can still talk about him. I would spend 10% of my fab on him because you are literally renting him until Higgins comes back. He had nine targets, all right? I mean, that's that's all you could ask for against Baltimore Ravens. You would think that would have equaled a touchdown and maybe 80 yards or something like that, but he did not. Only 30 yards. Terrible week for him. Higgins out, and uh, that's why we pumped him up, dude. I think I had him as a top three tight end play this week. Tanner Hudson. Was the tight end that actually got all the points? Out game Gasecki, 42 yards and a touchdown on seven targets. So that was that's what pisses people off, man. Is when another tight end comes on. Uh, give it to a wide receiver or somebody else, man. 16 targets over his last three games and a tight end one finish last week. Uh, average one yards per game with uh, Higgins. So when Higgins is in there, he does not even get. He gets one target, dude. That's it. At the Chargers week 11, they're giving. They were average against tight ends, so he has a good matchup next week. You can start him as a top. 
eight tight end next week without Higgins. But again, with Higgins, you cut his ass. And then, hey, man, I had to start this guy this week. Theo Johnson, 2.9% rostered, 1% fab. Four receptions on six targets for 37 yards versus Carolina. 19% target share. Dude, 90% plus snap count since week six. So he is the tight end to own there. And, uh, dude, <clears throat> Andrew Thomas has made the biggest difference with Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors is not going to do it this year. It's going to be uh, more stuff up close. So Theo Johnson, I think for a, if just for getting you through a bye week, his floor is like six, seven points, man. So that's what he got me today. And I'm actually happy with a random tight end off the waiver wire with that. So if you just need somebody that's available everywhere and you your tight end is on a bye, pick up uh, Theo Johnson, man. Let's get on to the quarterbacks, all right? Russell Wilson is the top pickup this week. 40% rostered, 10% fab I, I would spend on him. He only threw 28 times and only for 195 yards, but for three touchdowns versus Washington, man. And Washington's defense has been playing really well. They did not have Marshawn Lattimore. Marshawn Lattimore, who they just traded for, was out with a hamstring injury. He is averaging three rushing attempts per game, and he has one rushing touchdown in his three starts, so I like that. Quarterback two finish, quarterback 24 finish in his two starts, and now he just threw for three touchdowns. I'm a Sam Darnold owner. I'm looking at this licking my lips. Traded for Mike Williams, and again, I I, I listened to the coach speak or whatever, uh, some press conference. They traded for him for the red zone only. They wanted a 50-50 Red zone target, just throw it up to him. And I and I said, I think that Russell Wilson will start throwing more touchdowns now. I don't even know if Mike Williams did anything, but he did not get a target. Uh, but Pat Freemuth got a touchdown, so that's good. And so did George Pickens. They are in an A, man. You can start him next week. He is going versus Baltimore, man. Baltimore, week 11. I don't know how they keep on doing it, man, but Baltimore just gives up a ton of points. The most fantasy points per game, 25.2 fantasy points per game, dude, to quarterbacks. Holy shit, Russell Wilson start next week. And then I don't want to do this, man. You think I want to do this? You think I want to put Derek Carr on here? I don't want to do that. 12.3% rostered, 1% fab. Only threw for 25 times. I like it when people are throwing 35 plus times. Four almost 300 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, all that, literally, almost of that was uh, MVS versus Atlanta. And Atlanta gives a ton of points away to wide receivers and quarterbacks. But still, man, MVS first game, he gets that Rashid Hole, <laughs> Rashid Hole, <laughs> roll. And uh, Olave out for on IR. I don't like any of this, but he still has Kamara. He still has his tight ends. And now he has his crazy ass deep target that he just throws to. Like, that's what Derek Carr actually does every once in a while. Pretty well, man. He had not scored 14 plus fantasy points since week two. They have they haven't won a game since week two, for God's sakes, man. First game after firing the head coach. I thought this defense was going to fold up, but it looked like they were inspired. Look for this to carry on for maybe a game or two and then and then hit the hit the ceiling or hit the hit the wall again. They have Cleveland next week, week 11, the 16th fewest fantasy points per game. So Cleveland is actually average to quarterbacks and wide receivers. Um, 16.7 points per game to quarterbacks. Man, if you are desperate for a for a uh, quarterback, I like him more than Sam Darnold, for God's sakes. Dude, Sam Darnold's pissing me off. All right, everybody, that is the show. Thank you so much for watching. Again, this is an early show. I uh, shot it at the halftime of the afternoon game. So look for me to add more players in the comments. I need your help as well. I need you to add players in the comments that I missed. Or, hey, man, if you don't agree with this, if you have some information that uh, makes these players that I listed look bad, please add that as well. So hopefully I earned a thumbs up. If you actually did like this, please give me a thumbs up, man. That is one of the best ways to support this show. It hopefully sends us out to more people. And again, man, we need subscribers. So if you want to help the show, please subscribe. We have a Patreon if you want to help us that way. That helps, man. Uh, That's the only way we're going to ever be able to spend more time doing research and shooting more videos. So, hey, we have a go check out Jason's running back matchup um, episode that came out yesterday because, man, that will unlock anything that you are worried about for tomorrow or maybe even the afternoon games or the the night game if you watch this before. So you got to hurry, man. And then we have our trade targets, maybe even rest of the season schedule special coming out on Tuesday. Pay attention to that. This is Tyler Big Turd Ward, and I appreciate you.